Jerry Sanford was saying in a cabin kind of where those tree lines are. And when he uh, uh, started to run, he ran through the cornfield and he ran here to Stephen Bogue's home. They took Joe and his family. Mr. Bogue gets on his horse and he rides into Cassopolis. Hannah, secrets me upstairs. And I can look out the window and I can see what's going on. Come on, Hannah. <laughs> okay, so we'll go in the house and... Show you where Perry was and where they hid freedom seekers in the attic. Okay. Um, Stephen Bogue's home started off as a cabin, and uh, this past year. We unveiled some of the old beams of the cabin. We believe that the cabin was built maybe in 1828 or difficult to see but you can see the this is called boat post and beam you see the arms up there and this big hand hewn beam so this cabin was built by Job Davis in the 1820s and when Stephen Bogue and Hannah Bogue came here they um, bought the land and Job had to leave. <laughs> so uh, all the Bogue family moved in here the first winter. There were 16 of them. And then within a couple of years, they um, added additions. They added a, a kitchen area. Of course, this was redone in the 1950s and they added two parlors in the front. And we'll take up off that uh, chimney outside in this fireplace in the front and restore the windows how they originally were. And this is going to be an anti-slavery meeting in this room and we'll follow Cindy and um, into what we call uh, Hannah's parlor. We believe that uh, Hannah would have been in this room um, <clears throat> teaching her children and also um, uh, maybe uh, other ladies would come and uh, while their husbands were over doing the anti-slavery uh, meetings, they would have been in here. And do you think this is where her spinning wheel was? Well, I'm kind of thinking because the attic is on that side of the house, I believe she might have been right below it. Okay. So you think she was in the cabin then? I think she was in the cabin. Okay. Because, uh, so are we clear? There's two parlors that Stephen Bogue built on, as well as a sleeping room upstairs. And this is the stairs. And then this is the cabin that Job Davis built. And we kept that. And then he added, uh, they moved the chimney and added that cooking area, a kitchen. 
So uh, we'll take you upstairs and uh, we'll follow Cindy here and, and show you the attic where the freedom seekers were hidden and also where Perry Sanford looked out the windows and you know the, the lights inside okay so So this is where freedom seekers would have stayed or been hidden at. Just imagine, and you can see all, and so here they were, Hannah would tell them, tell the freedom seekers, if I, if you hear me on my spinning wheel and I'm doing it real fast, it means to stay quiet because the slave catchers are here. Okay. And if the slave catchers would come in the house and they would hear a creak or a noise, they probably would have thought it was just her on her spinning wheel. So originally we had the cabin downstairs in these, uh, attic or it's also called a garret up here and there probably was like a ladder or something. Yeah there would have been a, a ladder um, until uh, they added the front part of the house and the, the staircase. There probably would have been a ladder that came up uh, Yeah. and uh, <coughs> Sarah uh, this might have been where she would have slept at and her other siblings at that time. Uh, oh, the, the bold kids. Yeah, sure. the bold kids might have been in here as well. Yeah, yeah. We know he um, will show you the sleeping area, but they had six kids uh, pretty quick. <laughs> and um, so we figure the boys had an, an area and the girls. Yeah, so we're going to move over to, we call it the add-on to the cabin. <clears throat> and we call this uh, Perry's room because it's the first room that we we removed the carpet, and you could see the original floors, and uh, it's lath and plastered uh, walls um, that are here, and so we kind of go, uh, this might have been one of the windows that Oh, it, de it definitely was, um, it, 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 this w was just open. Yes. There were no walls up here when Stephen Bogue did it. Yes. So there were three windows across the front, and like Cindy said, you know, he could look out all of them. Yeah, and he, so he would have seen you yeah. know, William Jones stopping the slave catchers that were here, and, you know, and he, and he heard William Jones say, you know, I can shoot as fast as you can. Right. And so he was, you know, he could hear him, he could see him. Sure, because it was August and it was hot. <laughs> so these windows were open. Yeah. And, uh, and Perry, a lot of people say, oh, well, he couldn't see it. He was hiding in the attic. But when, in his um, report, he says, Hannibal hid me upstairs. Yes. So he could see out these windows and hear and see William Jones parlaying <laughs> with the slave catchers. Yes. And see when that good old Quaker Stephen Bogue arrived. Yes. With the 30 uh, so, others from Cassopolis. So we're. We're looking out the window that Perry did, and that's M60, 
um, out there. Of course, it wasn't paved then. And you can imagine it was, you know, getting toward morning and it, you can see, you can almost, you can, you can see William Jones home from here. Remember, we went that, we went there. So, so can you imagine Perry's up here looking out the window and I'm pretty sure he probably seen all these Quakers and all that going right on by this house going to Cassopolis from the Old Dell Mill. Sure. And he must have been really scared and you know the fact that William Jones kept those slave catchers busy and he had no gun, you remember? But he was a fast talker <laughs> and he was very funny. And um, so they didn't come in here and search for Perry. So really, uh, William Jones saved his life. Yes. Again. Again. <laughs> and so uh, we're going to go to the other room, kind of. Did you have a fill for the place? Uh, yeah, see, there was nothing. The, the, these walls weren't here. This bathroom wasn't here. This was just an open space with a bunch of beds. <laughs> and l l let me stop here. Uh, Martha Bow gave us this uh, beautiful bed and cradle. And that's original Vogue furniture. So what we're we're going to take all all these walls out of here and restore it like it was when Stephen Vogue built it. Yeah. So we would have a wide open space um, up up here. Um, so this wall here is going to be gone, and it'll be all open, and so. When we have that done, I hope you get the chance to come and visit us real soon, and we'll give you a tour. Be happy to. Let me show you. You can see in here, see there's that chimney outside, but you can tell exactly where the other window goes. So, yeah. So thank you. Thank you and hope to see you around. Yeah, it's been fun. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Bye-bye. <laughs>